the English language, from 1066 to about 1450. Subscribe to my channel on YouTube or visit my website for more videos of this kind. After the Battle of Hastings in 1066, the Normans, led by William the Conqueror, ruled over England. The Anglo-Saxon people were mostly reduced to the status of serfs and had to serve and obey their Norman masters. The language of this period is called Middle English. During this time, Old English, the language of the Anglo-Saxons, was influenced by the French spoken by the Norman invaders. At first, these were two different languages, Old English and Norman French. Slowly, though, they started to mix. Old English, the language of the Anglo-Saxons, developed under Norman influence into something that we call Norman English, and the French of the Normans slowly developed into something that we call Anglo-Norman, until, by about the middle of the 15th century, the two languages had mixed together to the extent that they formed a single language known as Early Modern English. There were several dialects of Middle English. The main ones were Northern, West Midland, East Midland, Southern and Kentish, while Celtic continued to be spoken in Scotland, Wales and Cornwall. The Ormulum, which dates from the second half of the 12th century, is an example of the East Midland dialect while the South English Legendary, a compilation of the lives of saints written in the late 13th century, is an example of the Southern dialect. The Northern dialect is exemplified in Cursur Mundi, a historical and religious poem written around 1300. A translation of a French work, entitled A Yen Bite of Inwit, meaning Remorse of Conscience, appeared in 1340 and is an example of the Kentish dialect. In the late 14th century, there were two works exemplifying the West Midland dialect. One was Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, an Arthurian romance, and the other was Piers Plowman, an allegorical poem. These are just examples, of course. There were many other works written during this period. But this one that stands out above all the others, both as literature and as a very important influence on the English language, and that is the Canterbury Tales of Geoffrey Chaucer. Chaucer's work helped to put the dialect that was developing in the area around London on the map and establish it as the standard form for English, which became the basis of early modern English later on in the 15th century. If you're interested in this topic, Groundbreaking research was done in the early 20th century by Walter Skeet in his English dialects from the 8th century to the present day, and that's probably a good place to start.